narrated by death himself, set in Nazi Germany, all about the power of reading and writing. Do I need to say any more? What is good, YouTube? My name is Ash Porter and welcome to my channel. It's so good to have you with us. And um, today we are looking at this absolute cracker of a book, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Zusak? I'm gonna say that's how you say that. Like normal with these fiction videos, this is gonna be split into two sections. The first part being the spoiler free zone. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ruin this book for you, but I am probably gonna try and sell it to you and tell you how flipping good this book is. But if you have read the book or you're not bothered about spoilers or all that, the second part of the video, which you'll see in like the chapters below, will tell you where the spoilers come and I'm gonna be discussing what I flipping loved in this book. Cool, so section one, spoiler free zone. Inspired by what his parents saw and the stories they told of being in Nazi Germany and Austria at this time, Zusak has crafted this incredible story based in Nazi Germany just as we are on the brink of war. Now coming into this book I had absolutely no clue what it was about. My brother-in-law Simon he suggested it, he said it was the most incredible book and I was like great I'll give it a read at some point and this was that point. Also you know I am a big fan of historical fiction but if I'm being really honest with you like World War II and that kind of period is something that has never really like gripped my attention or my interest. Like obviously you study about it in school and I even went on like a trip when I was like 13, 14 um, to go all around sort of like Belgium and Germany and those places. However, I just, it's never really gripped me. And so I would say my knowledge on like Nazi Germany is pretty limited. And because of this, in many ways, it made this book even more shocking and even more exhilarating for me to read. You know, like some of the stuff that goes on, I just did not expect and I didn't know that it happened at all. And so it just drew me into the story even more. What I also love about this book, and I like just wanna like say how important it is, is that uh, in the UK, you know, so often we grow up and we hear the British story of the Allies and what we did and the her like heroic role we played in World War II. And then we understand, you know, the suffering that um, we went through and the raid and the bombing raids on London and places like that. But you never really hear it from the other side of like, you hear about, oh, the evil that was done by, you know, the Germans, the Nazis in World War II. But you never hear about the life of the average German who wasn't really involved with the Nazi party and was just trying to get by. And this book, it opens up that window and it's something I think we all need to hear. Without giving too much away, this book follows the protagonist, a young girl, maybe about 10 when the book starts, called Liesel, 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 I don't know how you say it. I'm gonna say Liesel. Um, and her journey going into a new place, into a new situation, and also discovering an absolute love of reading and then later writing. And it's like her journey of realizing the power of words, the way in which you can, people can express themselves and she could express herself through writing and her reading. And just the power that, you know, like f f we all probably know if you're a reader, like books, they just feed us. They feed our souls a little bit. They give us joy. And um, it, that, this is her discovery of that in some dire situations. Zusak has crafted an absolutely incredible book. Like all good stories or especially ones of this genre that are meant to be quite heartbreaking. They, it absolutely breaks your heart. It brings you to the edge of despair. It makes you question humanity and be like, how can we be that evil? Yet it's also full of life, it's full of hope, it's full of the best of humanity. People who are willing to sacrifice for the other, for the unknown, and show um, just unconditional love to other human beings. And let's be honest, we all love to read stories like that. We all love to hear stories like that. And there we go. 
I don't have much more to say about this book without spoiling it. So if you haven't read it, please go away and read it. And if you have, let's carry on to the spoiler zone. Right, to kick this section off, talking about just what was so I thought was so great about this book, I want to talk firstly about the narration of this book because it was insane. Having death narrate the story is just such a good idea, but like, I'm sure it must have been done before, but I just think Zuzak executes it so well. Death just turns out to be such a quality character as well. You know, he's, he's charming, he's gentle, and he's like reluctantly carrying out his role as, as death and yet at the same time like you'd expect him to be he's incredibly thought-provoking and brings up some like big questions and naturally as you would if you were death and you did what he did like he sees the very best of humanity and he sees the worst of humanity we confuse him we anger him we bring joy to him and I think it's just written so well and it's a pleasure to read and I think just finally, the word I'm looking for is it just adds a different dynamic to the story compared to other books I've read. All right, the second thing I loved about this book, or that I just want to talk about because I thought it was really, really interesting in the way it was written was on the theme of the narration and death telling this story, the way that at times he kind of jumps around with the story, like telling you the future about what's going to happen, well before it happens chronologically in the narrative. And like the, the, a great example of this would be Rudy's death, where you're like, I think like midway through the book, maybe just after midway, you're like teased with it. He like tells you that, you know, he's gonna die and be in like pieces and Liesl's gonna have to like try and put his pieces back together and stuff. And it's pretty grim and you're like, oh, why have you told me that? Why have you ruined part of the story for me? But then, as a result of that, you're kind of left in suspense for the rest of the book, not knowing when that moment is coming. Like, and I think what it does, which I don't know whether this was his intention or it just is the outcome or my experience of it, it like made every moment that Lisa and Rudy were together after that even more precious. You read it and you're like, gosh, they haven't got long left. Are they gonna kiss? Are they actually gonna become like a teenage romance in the middle of Nazi Germany? Are they gonna acknowledge that they like really love and care for each other? How's their friendship gonna continue? And you just, I think it does make those, those moments after that bit even more precious. And don't get me wrong, it's absolutely devastating when you get to the end of the book and well, pretty much everyone dies. But, I think it's really clever writing, again, whether it is intended or not, because I think it adds then to their relationship in that story for that second half of the book. The third thing that really stood out that I loved, which was always just really interesting to be honest, was like any good book like this, and I think, you know, The Beekeeper of Aleppo, which I read recently and did a video on, is another great example of this, but actually, Books and stories, they're there to highlight parts of humanity and like who we are and our nature. And a book like this, like I said earlier about the book as a whole and with death's experiences, it, it brings out and highlights the worst of us and the best of us. And that, for me, is so captivating. We all know, really, that Nazi Germany probably wasn't a nice place to be, that <laughs> its track record is pretty grim and some absolutely horrific stuff happened. But what I think was really interesting is this book laid out that it wasn't just a lot of death in terms of the war and the way they treated the Jews and communists and stuff like that, but it was almost like as a nation, or the people in this book at least, like part of their soul had died being part of that regime and living in that time, in that place. And then, with, and within that, there were two specific things that stood out. And firstly, were these absolutely horrific, like, parades of the Jews that I just, I didn't know they happened, that they were a thing that they were taken out of their concentration camps and made to go work in other places. But as they did that, paraded along the streets and everyone came out and watched 
either in horror or joy, depending on where they stood with it all. And I think, ah, oh, it was, it was just heartbreaking and the absolute worst of humanity. But then the second thing, which I mentioned earlier in the non-spoilery section, was it just highlighted how grim life must have been for your everyday German citizen. And not just your everyday citizen, you know, Zizak is writing about a road where there isn't a lot of wealth. There's the mayor's house, you know, which we know that's full of wealth and we get to um, go and visit the library and Liesl has that relationship there. But in general, the, her relationships, the, the characters in this book are poor. And it's, and life got worse for them, you know, obviously I think everyone's life gets worse during a war, but it's not like they were thriving and it's not like they were all enjoying being under the Nazi regime. And I think it was just such an interesting insight. I mean, like even, you know, the Hub Hu Huber Hubermans, I don't know how you say it, I'm sorry. They were already poor before Liesl came along. And then they were even poorer. They started losing their jobs and their income. And then Max came along and they were even poorer. They could barely feed themselves. And it was just so grim. And yet, and alongside that, not only could they barely feed themselves, for, for a family like them who didn't totally agree, or not totally, they didn't agree with the Nazis, that they didn't agree with what was going on, it was like one wrong move and their life was over. Imagine for the people like that in that live through that in reality, how horrible that must have been. You would always be on edge, unsure of you do one thing wrong and you're gonna be taken away. Like, ah, oh, it's such incredible writing, but such a devastating insight into life at that time. And yet, despite all the really sad stuff, the negatives, the heartbreak, this book is so full of life, and it is so full of the best of people, and I flipping loved it. Like, again, going back to the Hubermans, the main, you know, characters in this book, like I said, they were already broke. They already weren't doing well, and yet they decided to take in Lisa from her, you know, let's be real, she probably would have died if they weren't taken, if they hadn't taken in. Her dad, who knows where it is, her brother has literally just died from like starvation. Her mum's probably about to be arrested and taken to a concentration camp. She was saved from an absolutely horrific situation. And obviously Hans and Rosa, they're very different personalities and they showed love in a very, different way but it was so clear that they loved her that they took her in and she became their daughter and that they would have done anything for her and then also so they were starving they'd already taken Lisa in they were uh, they didn't like the Nazis they were in trouble basically and then then hands out of just absolute honoring of spoken word and ties of the past and things that have been said they take in max they take in this jew and they look after him and you know yeah you know it can't have been nice for max it's not like they took him into like a five star hotel or anything but they took him in they gave him somewhere where he could live in relative safety where he could have food where he wasn't going to die the best of humanity and what's great is like we know from history that they weren't unique in, in what they did, that there were so many people, I don't know, maybe not so many, I'm not that, like I said, I'm not that clear, clued up on World War II, but you know, people took in the Jews, people risked their lives to save the other. I just have so much admiration for these fictional characters, but also who they represent in the real history of our Earth. And in amongst all this um, bravery, in amongst all this literally people sacrificing their lives and caring for the other, there's this beautiful relationship between Liesl and Hans. And also, you know, what the book's about is Liesl falling in love with reading. You know, when she arrives at the Huberman's house, she, she can't even read and write, or she can, but to a very low standard. And together, they work together to, read and to read that like grave digging book to start off with and then she gets more books and she steals some and then she builds that relationship with the mayor's wife and all this stuff and it's just 
as someone who loves books, and I think anyone who doesn't can appreciate it as well, it's just so beautiful because she, she in a, an absolute crappy time, in a crappy situation, I mean, her life circumstances suck. She finds some joy. She finds some hope. She finds a way to express herself, to communicate, to, um, to understand the world better. I, oh, I think it's just so quality. And then we get to the end of the book, which is, I mean, the only word to, can, to describe it is devastating. Like, I was not expecting that the whole street was gonna get blown up and that only Lisa would survive. I, I was not <laughs> expecting that, I can tell you. But again, it offers that, that insight into, oh, I thought, you know, I hadn't even thought about what it was like for the, the everyday German in the air raids that would have been going the other way. Like, I hadn't even thought about however many thousands or millions of, like, civilians that would have died like that. It, I mean, for me, yeah, it was just eye-opening. It's one of those moments you need, and it, what, it's why history is so important. And I think what the ending highlights is that war is grim. War is absolutely grim, and that, you know, we can... Sometimes we can split it into the good guys and the bad guys, but it's ever really that obvious. And also amongst that, civilians always get hurt. Innocent people always get hurt on both sides. And I think that's what makes war so grim and so just like devastating. And there you go, there's a lot to learn. This book, honestly, like, it is just top drawer. It is phenomenal. It is, oh yeah, I just don't have the words to describe it. Um, this has been so fun to talk about. I so enjoyed this book. I so enjoyed making this video. And I have been Ash Porter. Thank you so much for tuning in if you got this far. And I will see you next time.